Hey, new coach, welcome to the new to coaching community. I'm Allison Peterson, and this is video one of the five mistakes that new coaches make as they get started with instructional coaching. So if you are a brand new coach, you just got hired, or maybe you're going into your second year and you need a refresher of some things you want to be thinking about, this series is for you, the five mistakes that new coaches make and how you can avoid them. So before we get started with the mistakes, let's talk about how you're feeling as a new coach. I know that right now you are feeling excited and nervous. And that is a combination that most coaches are feeling as they walk into the unknown of instructional coaching. There are so many unknowns. There's so much fog and not a lot of clarity as you start this role. And so you're excited because you just got to do, you just got hired to do the work that you have been dreaming about doing. Or you're really excited about this opportunity, even though you're not sure you even raised your hand for it. They just told you tap, tap, tap on the shoulder that you would be great for it. But you're nervous because there's a lot to learn on this new journey and you're not even sure what those things are that you're supposed to be learning. <laughs> I hear coaches talk all the time about how they feel like an imposter. They have this idea of like feeling imposter syndrome right away as they step out of the classroom into coaching. This comes from a couple different things. One, sometimes it's because they're switching content or switching grade levels in a way that they feel like, well, they've never taught that. So how could they possibly coach that thing? So the nervousness usually comes from a feeling of not knowing enough or also not having enough expertise. And that leads us into mistake number one. Mistake number one that new coaches make is that they think they have to be the expert in everything when they step into coaching. And this is difficult because when you get hired, you feel like you're being hired because you have expertise, because you know certain things, maybe about literacy, maybe about math, certain subject area contents. Maybe it's because you've taught a lot of grade levels, but you at the same time are being told you're going to coach all of these grade levels and you don't know every one of those standards and everything because you haven't taught all of that. So it's this feeling of I'm never going to be good enough because I don't know everything that the teachers know, or I don't know everything that the teachers need to know. And you get this sense of feeling like you're not going to be good enough, like your expertise is not there. So sometimes you dive right in and you start learning, which is good. But I also want to help you see that this mistake is actually a misunderstanding. You don't have to be an expert as a coach. So the way to avoid this first mistake that new coaches make of thinking that they have to be the expert is to realize what you have to be instead. You have to be a partner. Instead of feeling like you have to be an expert, when you're starting into your instructional coaching role, you want to position yourself as a partner. This is so important in your ability to be successful as a coach because it helps you right away to not come off as an expert who knows everything and teachers just have to learn from and they're being told by, but instead finding the person who is going to come alongside them and coach them on their journey. This this idea of partnership has really come from Jim Knight's work. He actually has seven partnership principles that he talks about, and I will link some videos that he's made below in the description so you can check those out. But this concept of partnership in coaching is how you position yourself as someone who is side-by-side -side teachers, not someone who is an expert who is above them and knows more. In my experience as a coach, and I've coached for over 10 years now, I have never known all of the content that I had to know when I was coaching teachers. I coach teachers K to 12 and even preschool teachers. And so all of that content was not something that I had from my own experience. So I had to come alongside them and learn with them. But I had an expertise to offer. My expertise was in curriculum design and lesson design and in instruction. And often their expertise that they brought to the table was in the content that they they knew so well. One time I coached a physics teacher and trust, trust me on this one, physics is not my field, but I was absolutely able to work with her because she was able to bring all of the physics knowledge and I was able to help her take all of her knowledge and structure it into lessons and, and unit plans that were going to be effective in her instructional approach. So you can actually coach any teacher, you don't have to be the expert on their content. You just have to be willing to be their partner. When it comes to partnership, you can really think about this idea of a 
golfer and a caddy as a great metaphor for what coaches can do in partnership rather than in feeling like they are experts. So if you know a little bit about golf, you know that every pro golfer actually has a caddy who walks with them throughout their tournament and helps them achieve the goal of competing in the tournament, winning the tournament along the way. And this caddy is someone who has been working with them at every stage of the process. They show up at practice, they do practice rounds where they walk through the course and they prep the yardages and they look for the bunkers and all of the different hazards that could be in the way. The the relationship between the caddy and the golfer is so essential. The caddy is there to support and help the golfer think about the work that they are doing and to be able to think better because they have a partner to think with. So in that smaller picture there, they are on the range planning and making um planning and talking together and making a plan for how the round will go. And then they're walking the round together as well. So this image is really powerful when it comes to partnership because both of these people, the player and the caddy have a really important role to play. Now the player is the one who ultimately hits the ball, ultimately makes the shots and ultimately kind of owns the win when they do win. But the caddy is there supporting him along the way, giving him guidance, advice, um, guidance, giving him guidance, support, helping him think through the process and helping him be successful. And so the, the caddy's role is really vital. So both roles together is how a golfer can achieve a win in a tournament. And um, even professionals have a caddy. So it's very cool analogy to think about how you don't have to be the expert as a coach, but instead you can be a partner. So the mistake that new coaches make is they think they have to be the expert. They dive in trying to learn everything there is to know when they need to realize that you don't have to be an expert. You just have to be a partner willing to come alongside teachers and support them on their journey. They have plenty of knowledge to bring to the table and you have some things too. And with your partnership is how you guys can be successful. So do not make the mistake of thinking you have to be the expert and instead make sure that you are positioning yourself as partner. If you want to learn a little bit more about how to position yourself as partner, look in the description. I have my online course getting started for new coaches that is absolutely going to help guide you in this process of positioning yourself as a partner. I also have my new book, Kickstart Your Coaching Cycles, which is available. So click down in the comments to grab those links. So Follow along with this series, The Five Mistakes That New Coaches Make, and make sure that you can avoid those big mistakes. I'll see you in the next video.